Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this week we're talking about war. Not all of it is going to be a downer, I promise you. We're even going to get into some fashion stuff. War has been part of human history for a long time, so we're going to talk about the history of war on our planet. We're going to talk about tactics and how they've changed. We're going to talk about the consequences of war. We're even going to talk about why we love war. Not in like a gross way, more in an interesting way, because this is Test 2 Plus. Trust us. So stick around, make sure you subscribe, and let's get into it. Are humans prone to war? Is this like something that we always do? It's kind of something we've always done. That doesn't mean we have to do it. Let's define what war is, though, because you know, it gets a little blurry nowadays. According to the Stanford Encyclopedia, quote, War should be understood as an actual, intentional, and widespread armed conflict between political communities. War is a phenomenon which occurs only between political communities defined as those entities which either are states or intend to become states in order to allow for civil war. Okay, let me break that down a little bit. In this definition, they're saying that it's an armed conflict between states, and states alone that can be war. Of course, in the modern day, we know that this is not always the case. There's a lot of non-state warfare, but under this definition, it wouldn't be considered war. So another definition that we found was war can be an active conflict that has claimed more than 1,000 lives. That could also be considered war. A thousand lives lost, if that determines war, I mean, that's, there's been a lot more than a thousand lost throughout this century, let alone throughout the entire history of human warfare. I mean, in the 20th century alone, there was at least 108 million killed thanks to warfare. So looking at only military deaths, the United States had 405,000 military deaths. The United Kingdom had 384,000 military deaths. Awful. Germany... 5.1 million military deaths. They did start it, but you know that's still a lot. That's a lot, five million. The Soviet Union had 10 million military deaths and between 10 and 20 million civilian deaths related to that. That's even more flabbergasting. And that isn't even all the lives that were lost in World War II. Those are just military deaths. The numbers become staggering when you think about it this way. The estimates for total number killed in wars throughout human history does range, but it's anywhere from 150 million to a billion. It's very difficult to calculate because we didn't have people keeping track throughout all of human history. According to a New York Times article from 2003, in the past 3,400 years, humans have been entirely at peace for about 268 of them. It's not very many. It's only 8% of all recorded history. Here in the United States, the Washington Post did a crazy infographic about modern war. If you were born in 1915 and you're still alive, we have been at war for 35% of your life. Over a third. If you were born in 1955, it was 49% of your life. 84, 50% of your life. If you were born in 95, 71% of your life we've been at war. And if you've been born in the year 2000, 93% of your life we were at war. And if you were born in the year 2001 or beyond, we've been at war 100% of the time. Now, those numbers can change. You know, the longer you get away from that, war could stop. We could have peacetime and those numbers will start to drop. But we'd have to go for a long period to lower the last 14 years of war. It's kind of disconcerting, isn't it? Are we even capable of being at peace? What is that all about? What is peace? You know, you to understand war, you have to be able to define it even more specifically and understand what war is. War is technically conflict, right? The Heidelberg Institute for International Conflict Research produces a conflict barometer every year. And there are three elements to their report. Conflict actors, conflict measures, and conflict items. So let's define all of these. Conflict actors are either an individual, a state, an international organization, or a non-state actor. This is the who, right? Conflict measures is the what. Actions and communications carried out by a conflict actor in the context of their conflict. Then there are conflict items, which I'm going to call what they want. That is the material or immaterial goods pursued by the conflict actor via their conflict measure. So who, what, and I guess what, again, but what they want. <laughs> In addition, there's also the concept of conflict intensity. 
which is the sum of conflict measures in a specific political conflict in a specific area for a specific time. So, you know, what's going down, how much, where, and when are these people having conflict? The Heidelberg approach is empirical. It's got actual data behind it. The number of conflict-related deaths is not excluded from the analysis, but it's just one indicator. So saying a thousand people killed would only measure one bit of the Heidelberg Institute for International Conflict Research conflict barometer. A lot of people just measure war by how many were lost. But the report doesn't just base it on casualties. In 2014, the conflict barometer found the global number of political conflicts increased by 6 to 424 worldwide. 223 of those conflicts were seeing the use of violence, which means not all of them were violent. That's actually a decrease by 6 compared to 2013, by the way, which was right before the rise of ISIS. In 2014, the number of highly violent conflicts decreased by five. It actually went down. Less war. Now it's only about 46. 25 of those are called limited wars under their definition. For example, uh, the violent opposition to the annexation of Crimea, you know, problems in Ukraine. That is a limited war. But then there are full-blown wars. They just call them wars. Uh, and that's like Israel-Palestine, civil war in Libya that escalated in 2014. This is a limited war in Libya. It was a limited war that became a war in that year, which is interesting if you think about it. This whole group, the, their whole job is they are constantly tracking war and how much of it there is. Wars can escalate obviously limited war up to war, but they could also de-escalate from limited war down to violent crisis. If you're curious about a war going on now, by the way, all of this is publicly available information. We'll put the link in the description. It's super cool. But all of this information actually shows that there's less war now than there was in some places. So will we ever stop having war? I mean, are we prone to violence? Are we always going to have war? Is there always going to be more war? Is there more war? No, not really. Deaths from war and murder are actually in decline. In February 2012, Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Martin Dempsey said, quote, Today's world has become more dangerous than it has ever been. But there's little evidence that that is actually true. In March of 2014, the Human Security Report Project took statistics from Steven Pinker's book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, colon, Why Violence Has Declined, and reported surprising numbers. In the 1950s, there are almost 250 deaths caused by war per million people. Today, less than 10 per million. That's a huge decrease. The report is 127 pages long. We're not going to get into all of it and, you know, and spoil all of the statistics now since I'm sure you're going to read it thoroughly. But the trend is that it's going down. And this is looking at it from 10,000 BCE until now. So it's, it's going down. Because war deaths are actually trending down, does that mean that we're getting better at peace? Or does it mean we're getting better at war? We're going to talk a little bit about how war strategies have changed, tactics have changed over the centuries tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe for more Test 2 Plus. And let us know what you think down in the comments. Do you think it feels more dangerous now? If you were born after 2001, you don't know a different world. But if you were born in the 80s, it's completely different. So let us know in the comments. And make sure you keep coming back here to Test 2 Plus. Come follow us over on Twitter. You can find the show at Test Tube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Yes.